Now, this is a wild rose, pretty much. This yeah, is, it's kind of a, a tame wild rose. <laughs> yeah, the ones I saw on Lake Superior were, oh, your bees like them, were uh, wild. They weren't planted, I don't think, by anybody. Maybe they were. No. Well, hey there, folks. It's Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Welcome to Northeast Minnesota. That's right, Northeast Minnesota. Well, folks, I am here in my happy place. Well, not necessarily here. This is the first time I've been here, but Northeast Minnesota is my happy place. It's where everything just seems right. And I have with me, who I'm a guest of at his place to go look at his bees, I'm up here with Jeff of Windy Ridge Apiaries. But he's got basically a vlog like mine where he's showing you what he does and it's different than most people were seeing. It's a hobbyist in Northeast uh, Minnesota. Now, here's Jeff right here. Y'all come, <laughs> if y'all have followed and went over there, y'all know Jeff, go to his channel, check him out. But when you talk about bees up here, things are so limited with you. <laughs> I mean, as far as weather goes and season goes, how many other beekeepers do you know of that you have around here? Oh, actually, there's quite a few, but not really in this general area where I'm at here. I'm up on the north shore of Lake Superior, a little bump and roll called Knife River, Minnesota. A stop of mine every year, by the way. They got a great candy kitchen down by the lake. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing here? Let's go. All right. <laughs> but anyway, um, so basically along lake superior itself probably 15 miles out or so it it's it's the the lake really affects the weather a lot and so we've got a lot of rain a lot of fog went you know winters are not quite as bad because we got the warm water until the lake freezes over and then it gets cold and uh, you know the coldest i've ever been here at my house is 57 below zero yeah, see, that was back in 97. His idea of winter and mine are totally different. <laughs> That's true. But uh, in this area, not too many beekeepers, but when you go south of Duluth, which uh -huh. is not too far away, about 20 miles down the road, um, south of there in Carleton County and whatnot, there's a lot of beekeepers okay. down in that area. Because we get away from Lake Superior ways. We call it the lake. Sorry, right. I use the lake, but uh, and then it starts to warm up. We have a lot right. warmer days down there. So, right now, it's what I just looked at when I came back here. Fifty-three degrees. Fifty-three right degrees. What's the day today? The seventh. The eighteenth. Nineteenth of of somewhere, July. Somewhere of July. <laughs> I got to find a jacket. <laughs> okay, so yeah. So anyway, but uh, he's right. I come down here in the summer times, so and when you get near, once you get to Duluth, it completely cools off. It's beautiful. So. Anyway, I wanted to stop through and see him, and we've kept in touch, and he told me we were starting a channel, so I, I, I think it's a very unique channel, especially the first few videos when you turn it on, and he's wearing snowshoes to go check on his winter hives. <laughs> to me, it's very interesting, and that's what I think makes uh, YouTube so cool, is you can see people from everywhere. And here, Jeff, he's a hobbyist beekeeper, because he's got many other hobbies, so it's definitely a hobby for him, but he's got quite a few hives and, and quite a few yards. But uh, I just think it's interesting to see beekeeping from this perspective especially somewhere I love to go because I remember when I first kept bees I would come up here on vacation and go I wonder if there's any beekeepers in the area well now I know one so there you go so I can always come up and yeah. maybe one day bring my jacket and we can go through some hives today would be an awful day anyway but we're gonna at least yeah. go look at his hives and yeah. take a look at what he's got <laughs> so anyway well, like I said, this one has some limitations. It's, he, it he's got a swarm trap on his house and he seems to think these are robbers, but he had a swarm move in here in July. Listen to me, July. Uh, and it stayed for a while, as you can see. It didn't go in a box and left. And now we've got a few bees going in and out. I wonder, are they scouts or robbers, as he thinks? Be interesting. Because you never know if you were to get a swarm in here anytime soon. Hopefully not yours. But maybe there's some feral ones out there that'll come. Who knows if those are scouts? But I love his boxes. He burns all his boxes. He puts this brand on them all. Windy Ridge Apiary is really nice. Really nice. Let's go look at his, his yard here. The woods around here, of course, have in their May and early June flowers, but then it, and the tree flowers too, but then after that, it's just not much. They really need fields. The wildflowers are incredible here. Look, there's just all kinds. Here's my, uh, These. 
Right. That's a clover, looks like there. And these here. Wow. I wish we could have a. a f I'm going to plant some. I've decided this year after the situation with this season, although we came out well, I'm going to plant just a, a whole section of sunflower and wildflowers. I got a guy help with bees north of me, and he does that. It's probably obvious that I haven't even mowed the lawn yet this year. But why would and, you? I mean. That's my excuse. Yeah, I, that's a good excuse to have. <laughs> it's a honeybee habitat. It, it is. It, it also had some trees fall down. And, uh, but it's absolutely a honeybee habitat. I mean, that's yeah. that's a perfect example. There's a swarm trap. Yeah, that's the one. It's got one the, over uh, there. The swarm actually went into. So. so that's the one you think the swarm actually went into. Where? So there's bees coming and going. Yeah. Maybe not right now because of uh, everything's a little wet. Well, if because he had a, he had a hive swarm. That's what he thinks was under that other box. But in the end. If they split themselves naturally, as an old man told me one time, even if they did go in the woods and you've got one here, you've still made one. You haven't lost anything. Yeah. You're still so breaking even. I, I've seen them starting to bring in some honey, or not honey, uh, pollen here. I was going to say, you got good eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see in the dark there with my x-ray vision. But <laughs> they're they're pulling honey, or I there he goes again, again. pollen in here. I get too excited when I get in camera. Uh, well, your bees like the camera. Mine would absolutely eat me up by now. <laughs> so these bees are coming, but you got to remember it's 55 out here. Uh, yeah. In Louisiana, they they would be blowing and going, but I imagine once it gets up to 60, these things are probably just flying in and out like crazy. I've seen it in the spring when it gets a 45, they're out flying around. Yeah. Short trips. Right. Um, but right now, this. Oh, is, there you go. This is, a, I'd say, a normal temperature for a number of days through the summer. Right. So they. Oh wow, there's a. So they're just slow right now. But there's plenty out there for him to go get and he's you see him pollen already coming in on him so you got a box of bees there so in the end you still have a box of bees so you didn't lose anything yeah, i hope so <laughs> and as, as far as feral bees go up here i'm not so sure we have any feral bees really because uh, i once in a great while you hear about somebody not necessarily in this area but uh farther west and to the south ways oh i got bees in my trees somebody come get them but i've never heard about it around here so if we do have bees i think they're just coming from somebody else's huh. apiary. well there you go uh, but i don't recall ever seeing one up here isn't that something so, so uh, what is that tree so there if you, if you lose your bees you you better catch them <laughs> yeah you better catch them because <laughs> they're not going to last anywhere else what is this oh uh, this is a red berry elder okay and I'm not sure why they call it red berry, but uh, <laughs> it could be that it, the berries are red. But <laughs> Does it flower uh, prior to yeah, the berries? Actually, I have some, uh, <laughs> it might be in the next video. <laughs> I got some pictures of this thing flowering okay. and a lot of other things flowering up here. And of course that dates back to uh, early June, somewhere in there, late May. This is a... I think it's bird's foot trefoil, the yellow stuff. Bird's foot trefoil. I think that's what it's called. Get that. There's something we haven't seen yet. But uh, they will work this over too. Wow. Like we just don't have this. All our stuff burns up. Because everything's wet. But Yeah, all right, ours. So here's, here's, of course you have to have bare fences. Yes, yes. Well, this one doesn't have a fence. And, uh, of course, uh, the reason I got the ladder there is because that's where they went up. The swarm did, and they tried to cut off. And I saw see three the branches. branches up there. Yeah. And uh, took them down, and I shook them into the box here. Okay, so here's here's where he shook them in. And uh, no long, no sooner did they get the third branch shook in there did they uh, come flying out and uh, took off again. So they didn't like this, or I th I think that they had just swarmed because right. uh, the branches there i couldn't find any sort of wax particles like you would right. if they've been sitting there for a while right so there's the branches they didn't like this box and uh they flew up and buzzed around for a while and eventually ended up and it went up by the house there well if i was a bee i'd like this box well at least yeah. you got them in a box period so they went so you shook them in this box they didn't like it they flew up to the box at the house they turned around at the house and I think didn't like that <laughs> after a few days of building wax and went over here to this box over here in the tree so there you go in the end however they got there they got there so i'm leaving this here for now um just in case they abscond or whatever they are but uh 
I also got a couple other, another hive that's fairly strong here. But now on your video, we saw this yard and you had all the new packages put in here, yep. plus the ones that survived winter. Yes. And now I see open space, meaning right. you I, have moved them. I've uh, moved the three Italians, that's those uh, three spaces there. Okay. Uh, down to new locations for me. Uh, one went up north of Two Harbors, about five miles. And for a gal there who wanted some pollination stuff, don't touch that fence. Yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to, trust me. Tell you what, let me go turn No, you're all right. I'm going to just shoot this video here. I'm not going to touch your fence. Turn that off. Yeah, he's going to turn the fence off because, you know. Okay, it's off. <laughs> yeah, it's off. Trust him. He's probably got a capacitor on there. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. <laughs> but, uh, and so one hive went up to, uh, what I'm calling my trillium. Uh, B yard and uh, two more went down to Carlton. And, uh, well, they're out. They seem to be. Yeah. Now these are flying, but you know, again, they're they're still just like that box. There's a lot. You can they tell there's a, a lot of bees lethargic. in that box, but they're not moving heavy. They're just they're a little lethargic. It is chilly, but so it's. I mean, 55. It's that's pretty yeah, cool for them. I'm pretty sure the swarm came out of that end box, the one that okay. flew last year. Probably so, because these are packed. It was my fault for management. I was very busy all through June with a lot of other things. And uh, <laughs> No, nah, it is. It, we get busy. We're hobbyists. We're, we're not, you know, that's what we do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so, you know, they get away from us. You know, we have jobs we and have things like that. Well, um, some of us have jobs, you know. Well, yeah, that's right. I forgot he's retired. But <laughs> being retired from a lot of people tell me is a job. You need to retread. <laughs> so true. there's a lot going on. But we all get busy. Yeah, basing uh, when people when people decide how how good of a beekeeper you might be based on swarms, that's um, that's pretty chinchy because, you know, some people can do better than others with things, and some people have different varieties of bees. But I've seen big time commercial guys such as even Bob Benny himself show some of his empty spots from swarms. And yeah, if you recall his video this year, he had several that they didn't get back to the yard in time. Yeah. So yeah. talk about the electric fence here, and uh, I I have fence charger hanging off a tree over yeah, here. Yeah, it's a charger. A cord that goes all the way up to my, uh, my septic tank where I have electricity. Yeah, it's, yeah there and, it is. And um, I've got, even though this doesn't look like it's 25 miles here worth of fencing, I've got a 25 mile fence charger around here. Oh yeah, well. Because the, the longer the mileage that they dictate or they say on their fence chargers, the higher the voltage right to help compensate for that extra length right and so this thing is putting out somewhere around 15 16 thousand volts and i need that much because the bears and that's really why this the only reason this is up for the bears and i've had bears standing right where you are looking over the fence i've, I've got a uh, trail cam up here uh -huh. <laughs> and i do catch them do that there you but go the bears have such thick fur and thick skin that you need something that's going to arc Right, you know, three eighths of an inch. That's going to give them a good jolt. As I understand it too, you need to keep this cut down pretty well. Um, yeah. So, so they ground out well, right? Yeah. Because so the bear they, needs to be a ground. So they ground out, and also so the grass and whatnot doesn't. Yeah. Start touching and arcing. That, that yeah, that's normal fence maintenance. But I had read somewhere where, um, uh, matter of fact, I tell you who it was was Jose Urebe. Urebe, I guess is how you say his name. I, I always, I always just tell you Jose, California beekeeper. Oh, yeah. He had put wire down underneath. Oh, sure. Like a chicken to, fence. Right. So that it would help ground because he was having problems. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're in an area where there's really dry ground, yeah. I'm sure that's true. So we don't have bears yet where I'm at, but there are some Louisiana beekeepers that do deal with bears. Florida beekeepers do that deal with black bears. Uh, yeah, and yeah. hopefully we don't get to that point uh, where I'm at and where my yards are. But anyway, that's his yard. Nice looking yard. Bees are flying. Uh, and... Uh, just a little lethargic because of the cool weather. Yeah. In, in the rain. In the rain. Yeah, it's they been waiting. raining off and on all day. Yeah, you know, they've been waiting for, probably waiting for the flowers to dry off before yeah. they let out. But look, right out in front, I mean, goodness gracious, this is a <laughs> absolute buffet for them. I mean, there's so many different wildflowers. And there's Dutch clover. Didn't see that earlier. You got Dutch clover, too. Sure. Yeah. So, you, yes, it's one, two, three, four, five, six different flowers right off the bat that you can spot out here. And I'm sure... Pretty much every single one of them is bee friendly as far as yielding either nectar, pollen, or both. So we're out here talking about weather, we're talking about seasons, we're talking about all this going on. Then we look over here and this is where he waters his bees. So now they don't have to venture anywhere else. And bees 
love that. Look at them all down there. Look at that. They they love oh, they, yeah. the, the mucky, muddy, algae field. I know in the south you can have the nastiest looking stuff and they love it. But this is just uh, uh, basically composted leaves yeah. with water. And they, they absolutely love this. So people put out water. I know you have to sometimes. And they'll go to it and they do different things to the water. But boy, if you can get something like this with some composting uh, leaves or any plants, they will go to it in a minute. I don't know what it is about the, the minerals in the water or the... Maybe it's like tea for them. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go, folks. I'm out here visiting. I just wanted to show you guys where I'm at on vacation. I come up here annually. And now I know a beekeeper up here. I can stop by and see how his bees are doing. We we're talking a lot about the seasons. And you know how I complain about mine. I'm worried about honey and all that. Well, up here, I've always said this about northern beekeepers. They have such a challenge when it comes to the compact season. We were just talking about his season. And you're talking about if you can even start building your colonies that come through winter, you have to start that as best you can internally somewhere in the March time frame up this far north. Then you have to get in and, and build them up or make sure they're built up. Splitting, I don't even know how I'd bother with that. And then he's not even putting supers on until end of May going into June. And by August they're done. Now they're ready to get them into winter. Because what, September, evenings in September, you guys, late September, you guys are starting to get... Uh, we, we can have the chance of frost in, yeah. in the middle of September. See, so I mean... But we can have a chance of frost till the end of June here, too. Well, there you go. That's, that's, it's, it's <laughs> so it's such a challenge. Everybody has their own challenges, and we have ours, too. We have problems with ours, but we're, our seasons, I've always said this, are so much more forgiving because if we make a mistake, we're okay. But in his case where, you know, life happens, we get busy, and that hive swarms, that, that hive's done. But here, he doesn't... He, he, his bees here... He doesn't keep this isn't his honey production yard anyway he goes further south for that but still i mean an existing colony could make honey up here but when they swarm it's all bets are off for both of them where we're at if we swarm we can build one up if we have to and still have time so very different very different uh, uh environment for the bees different challenges for sure but nonetheless still beekeeping still the same thing so well, anyway, guys, I'm going to have to hit the road here in a little bit, but I wanted to stop by and see Jeff. Jeff, it was good there to see you. Well, thanks, Mike. I'm glad to have you here. Oh, I'm all over the place. Uh, look forward to uh, watching all your videos. Too. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, you guys make sure and go check out Windy Ridge Apiaries. I'll put the link in the description and, and a link up in the corner. Um, I enjoy watching other beekeepers, and there's no other beekeepers from this particular area. And again, it's a unique area because of Lake Superior, one of my favorite places in the world for sure. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. i got to hit the road and head down to Duluth. But I appreciate all y'all watching. I appreciate you, Jeff, for having well, me. I, I thank you very much for all your support over the past year. Yeah, we're, we're, and, and look, he's, he's, he's in good with Mr. Ed, too. So <laughs> and Mr. Ed told me, he said, hey, are you going to go by and, and visit Jeff up in Minnesota? No, no, I take that back after I told him where I was at. He first asked me, Mr. Ed said, hey, you know Jeff from up in Minnesota. You're going to be anywhere near him. I said, yeah, I'm actually going to be right where he lives, going through his place. I went through in February. He goes, are you going to go by and see him? I said, well, absolutely. I can't pass through. Fortunately, you were able to make it this time. Yeah, we were here, yeah. February, we just were on a tight schedule. My flight got canceled and everything got messed up. But uh, glad I could come by now. <laughs> I appreciate you having me. I appreciate you showing your bees to us, talking to us a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and call today. I appreciate you guys watching. It's Barry's Best Tiny. I'm Mike. And I'm Jeff. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful and he week. Does bees. <laughs> oh yeah, and I do bees. I didn't leave. I don't always do that. But y'all have a wonderful week and may God bless you. We'll see y'all later. God bless.